Exercise releases a whole range of chemicals into our blood, and they can give you this feeling of quite elated, almost the runner's high, if you like. But what we're fundamentally interested in is getting more blood and more fuel to the brain, and exercise helps us do that. Damien's latest research focuses on the best way to exercise to get maximum blood flow to different parts of the brain. Today, he's putting me through two different tests on the exercise bike. And one of them will work my brain just as hard as my body. First, Damien's going to measure the blood flow to my brain when I'm doing some standard exercise. As I cycle, Damien and his team can see which parts of my brain receive the most blood. But it's the next part of the experiment Damien is really interested in. A test I've been warned is a little strange. So now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat that. But this time, when we're exercising, we're going to have you looking at the flashing checkerboard. This looks fun, but why are we doing it? The brain is working super hard to try to make sense of all of the changing shapes. For this test, Damien's getting me to stare at the board for 30 seconds, then shut my eyes for 30 seconds. Three, two, one, eyes closed. This time, I'm working my brain at the same time as exercising. Damien's team are all the time measuring how much blood flows into my brain and where it goes once it gets there. This is flow velocity, so red blood cells whizzing into your brain. So they're whizzing into the front of the brain, the middle cerebral artery, and to the back of the brain, the posterior cerebral artery. At rest, you can see there's less flow moving into the back of the brain. Perfectly normal. Now, no when... worry then, thanks. <laughs> yeah, perfectly normal, that's good to know. And then when you exercise, you've got a whopping great 63% increase to the back of the brain. That's really huge. So this is a really important feature in as much as we know that the back of the brain, certainly in some of these mental health disorders, particularly prone to impairment. So with exercise here, as you can see, we're selectively targeting the back of that brain. So during standard exercise, the blood flow to the back of my brain increased by 63%. Increasing blood flow, and in particular to the back part of the brain, helps maintain good mental health because it carries with it nourishment in the form of oxygen, glucose and proteins, which help grow and repair brain tissue. Next, what difference did the flashing squares make? I want to know what was going on when I was opening and closing my eyes. Tell me about my brain then. You didn't feel as if you are doing any extra work, yeah. but the brain was working jolly hard. So you've got a 6% increase in flow to the front part of the brain, but you've got a whopping great 29% increase, just by looking at the checkerboard, to the back part of the brain, with that additional visual stimulation superimposed on the exercise. Exercising at the same time as performing a mental task results in more blood flow to the back of the brain, which can help alleviate symptoms of depression, panic disorders and anxiety in the long term. It's thought that this hard-to-reach area contains some of the parts of the brain which are fundamental to mood. So any additional stimulation of the brain translates into good news for the brain in terms of supercharging, turbo-boosting extra blood into the brain. So dancing, rock climbing, listening to a podcast, you know, all of these that challenge the brain in addition to the exercise is good news for the brain. So any activity where you have to concentrate at the same time as exercising is a great way to boost your mood. It can be as easy as listening to a podcast when you go for a walk or a run.